one of the reasons this show is an audio medium instead of a visual one is that I can't be trusted with the ability to show you all charts and graphs. I'm a bit of a nerd for statistics and demographics, and if I had the ability to break out pie charts and bar graphs, that nerdery would scare off between 67 and 84% of the audience based on graph frequency and obscurity, as noted on a histogram that only I could see. But when I'm deprived of visual aids, even I can hear how boring this shit gets when I start listing off numbers. That being said, I do still track those statistics and demographics somewhat obsessively, which is why I'm one of the very few people and even fewer non-Christians that was excited to see an alert this week about LifeWay Research's latest annual church profile in my inbox. Now, this is, of course, the very definition of a biased source. LifeWay Research is an arm of the Southern Baptist Convention, and this report is something that they compile for the benefit of member churches. It's like a state-of-the-denomination report that offers an assessment of their overall trajectory. And much like the umpteenth president in a row declaring that the State of the Union is strong, there's a heavy dose of positive spin on everything they report. But they do use numbers to report this stuff, and you can put all the perfume and lipstick you want on lost another 241,032 members, but you ain't gonna make it look good. And honestly, the extent to which they tried to pretty this shit up is hilarious. The headline they offer in their press release is, no shit, quote, Southern Baptist membership declines, slows. Baptism in attendance grows, end quote. So sure, yeah, well, they have fewer members, but it's fewer, fewer than the last fewer. So it's actually pretty good news if you think about it. The subheading continues this rosy spin with, quote, in 2023, baptisms, worship service attendance, and small group participations grew among Southern Baptist congregations, end quote. And, and a couple paragraphs in, there's a slightly more straightforward summary in a little click to tweet section that's all highlighted and reads, quote, SBC membership declined for the 17th straight year, dropping below 13 million for the first time since the mid-1970s. However, the less than 2% decline was the smallest in recent years, end quote. So yeah, so clearly the narrative they're trying to mold is, yes, the number of Southern Baptists is declining, but the decline is slowing. In other words, the worst of the crisis is over. We've nearly stopped the bleeding, and now we can just stay the course, which is honestly music to the ears of anybody hoping to dance on the SBC's grave within their lifetimes because we lost almost another quarter million members and have our lowest membership since the fucking Carter administration should be a red alert situation. And to the extent that it's being treated as anything less, it's worthy of celebration on our end right? The entire article is full of this kind of rose-colored optimism. LifeWay's executive director says that a lot of the drop is actually just churches catching up on old paperwork and cleaning up the membership roles. So, you know, it might look like a steep drop in the last couple of years, but it's actually, that represents a a, a smoother trend over a longer period, which is silly because the numbers have been plummeting for nearly two fucking decades. They also point out that a lot of it is older members dying off rather than young members leaving. And of course, a lot of that is just that darn pandemic disrupting people's church going habits, right? Now, to be clear, the pandemic disruption does explain a lot of the numbers in their report. Mostly the ones they're trying to sell as positives, of course, like the 2023 increase in baptisms and worship service attendance over 2022. But again, the downward trend in membership didn't start in 2020 or 2019. Right, which is when the pandemic started. Membership peaked in 2003 and it's been steadily dropping ever since. People weren't leaving the church in 2004 because they were pretty sure a pandemic was gonna disrupt their shit in the future. Of course, the real reasons for this mass exodus don't show up anywhere in the report. There's no room in their rosy picture for discussions of the recent sex abuse scandals, nor their pathetic efforts at addressing them. Nowhere in the report is there any mention of their toxic views on homosexuality and how they're increasingly out of step with the sensibilities of modern society. No mention of their attacks against churches that dare to have women pastors. In fact, the only time they deign to acknowledge any of their real problems is a throwaway paragraph about their inadequate response to the accusations of child sex abuse in their churches. And as awful as it is that they're plugging their ears with propaganda about slowing declines and clerical illusions in light of all that, it's a hell of a weakness to those who would stand against them, right? I mean, I'd I'd much rather they recognize their error and modernize their view on LGBTQ rights and gender equality and shit, but I have to admit that it would make our job of leading people away a hell of a lot tougher. Now, this report isn't all good news for us. Even as the SBC is shrinking in membership, it's growing in influence. 
There's no doubt that conservative Christians control public policy to a greater degree right now than they have at any point in my lifetime. Right. And, and there's no organization better positioned to dictate the conservative Christian agenda than the Southern Baptist Convention. Hell, even as their membership rolls plumb new depths, they're bringing in more money than ever. Their income in 2023 was a record ten billion dollars. And that's just dollars. right? Like, imagine how rich they are when you factor in all the property and politicians they own. That being said, dollars are ephemeral. So are politicians. Membership isn't. Every time a person leaves their church, they're deprived of that next generation. That's a kid they won't be able to indoctrinate before they know how to think back. That's a generational hit to their organization. And when you consider the average age of membership, it's equally clear that their chief sources of income are dying. And it's worth remembering that, like, we're not really subject to the same sort of decline. It wouldn't matter. It's not happening, but it also wouldn't matter. The goal of the atheist movement was never to grow the atheist movement. Right. We want more atheists. But in terms of like members of a movement, we're ultimately trying to put ourselves out of business. Our goal is to shrink the religious movement. And to any degree that we're managing that, we're winning. 